meeting of the planning board, uh, calling the meeting to order. The first uh, item on our agenda is to review and approve the minutes from our prior meeting of August 15, 2006. First, I would ask, are there any comments or questions regarding those minutes? If not, do we have a motion? So Peter has made a motion. Is there a second? Seconded by David Griffin. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion, motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have in our packet tonight some correspondence, a memorandum from the town manager regarding the land trust, a memorandum from the code enforcement officer regarding the land trust, the July 2006 edition of zoning practice, as well as a letter from the town manager to the main board of environmental protection dated S September 20, 2006 regarding Sproing Woods. Uh, the first item on our agenda this evening is the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust Office Site Plan. The Land Trust is requesting site plan review to renovate the existing building, excuse me, the existing vacant building located at 330 Ocean House Road into an office for the Land Trust. Section 19-9 Site Plan Review Completeness. At this point I would ask the applicant to come forward. Uh, and summarize where we are with this project. And I believe the issue tonight is completeness. Yep. Welcome. Hi, uh, Chris Franklin, the executive director of Land Trust. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, we're extremely excited by this project, um, something we've been working on since December when the property was donated to us. We received a lot of community support, not only in terms of unsolicited donations, but also in terms of donated services and time from community members from uh, help with the architectural design, uh, landscape ideas, uh, and we've been interviewing builders on the project and we're very excited to make this future home of the land trust uh, conform to the town center plan and to really be uh, one of the anchor tenants. We, we plan on being there for a long time and we think it's a great match to have an organization such as ours uh, right in the town center and we're, and we're eager to, uh, to move forward on this project and uh, obviously here to uh, answer questions tonight as they come up and determine completeness. Okay, thank you. As I mentioned in the introduction, oh, John, did you wish to yeah. speak? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, thank that, you. That was sort of an intro to. Very good. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, I'm just going to give a, a brief presentation of the, uh, of the property, the existing conditions, the site plan, and then I'm going to turn it over to Ray Hamlin, uh, who, is the, uh, who worked on the architecture for the renovated building. Uh, the lot is a 40,000 square foot lot located on <coughs> located at 330 Ocean House Road. Uh, it is a lot that was created and conveyed and generously given by um, the abutting landowners, uh, Bruce and Phyllis Cogshell, and Peter and Heffenreffer and his wife. Uh, the lot contains 200 feet of frontage along Ocean House Road and is located in the town center district. Uh, some of the existing conditions on the property, uh, there is an existing thousand, approximate 1,000 square foot building, which is, as you know, the former fish and farm uh, building. Uh, there is a 12 foot wide gravel access drive uh, that exists today. Uh, the, the front portion of the property is, is mostly open with some nice uh, specimen uh, and mature trees, and uh, the sides and the rear of the property are densely wooded. There, <clears throat> with regard to utilities, there is a, uh, uh, the building is serviced by a three-quarter inch water service from an eight-inch water main in Ocean House Road. Uh, there is uh, electric and telephone that uh, connects to the building from a utility pole out on, within the right of way. And the sewer is uh, serviced by an existing septic tank and leach field located on the southerly side of the, the property. Um, you'll note that in, in our packet, we, uh, we hired William Fornell of Advanced Leach Fields to 
go out and inspect the leach field. Um, his assessment, he's got a letter report in, in our packet, uh, basically that um, uh, indicating that the system is properly functioning. Uh, the proposal consists of the renovation of the existing 1,000-square-foot uh, uh, building. I'm going to let uh, into the headquarters of the, uh, our offices, I should say, of Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, and I'm going to let uh, Ray present uh, the improvements to the building. Uh, site improvements consists of widening the gravel access road uh, from 12 feet to 20 feet, um, installing five uh, parking spaces on the northerly side of the access drive, uh, two here, one of which is a handicap space, and three located here. Uh, <clears throat> there'll be a, uh, we've noted uh, originally, and I believe on your plans, we've indicated a walkway uh, which is on the inside of the uh, the, the large drainage swale that exists along Ocean House Road. Uh, we have relocated that walkway uh, closer to Ocean House Road um, uh, in accordance with, a, with the comments by staff and, and the town engineer. Uh, the reason why it, it, it swerves a little here is to avoid an existing utility pole located uh, in this location. Uh, we have improved the drainage system uh, of the property. Uh, it's very flat, extremely flat in the, in the uh, front of the building area. And what our intentions are to regrade this area to create a more positive pitch away from the building uh, to a point uh, located here where, where we've uh, located a drain inlet which will be piped into the existing drainage system. And we've also shown a, uh, a exterior decorative light fixture, which a, a catalog cut is in your packet, um, located here, uh, which will illuminate the front of the, the, uh, the building, including the parking area. We've also located a sign uh, in its <coughs> present location, or where the, the former sign of the Fish and Farm uh, sign was located. Uh, generally, what we're, what we're trying to do is to upgrade the property, but to preserve, uh, to preserve the existing character. We uh, have only had to remove one tree located in this parking spot here. Uh, other than that, we've preserved all of the existing uh, trees and lawn areas. Uh, we're also locating a, a maintenance uh, shed uh, in this location here, <clears throat> and we've identified a picnic area uh, beside the building here. This will store some of the uh, uh, some of the tools and the maintenance equipment for the land trust. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ray to talk about the architecture. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ray from Garvin Turgeon Architects. Um, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I'd uh, like to renovate the donated lobster cooker and plant <coughs> stand building at 330 Ocean House Road into their office spaces. Um, we tried to, um, as, far as, as far as the design concept, we wanted to uh, maintain the fish and farm concept, which is in keeping with Cape Elizabeth's fishing and farming traditions. Um, Design incorporates elements of the vernacular found throughout the community. Um, the actual office space itself is for two full-time employees, and uh, we have a conference and activity space uh, to support that. Um, the, uh, the we, we want to make the building kind of uh, fit in with the. Uh, the landscape, so we want to use uh, natural earth tones as far as the color of this building. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, I just uh, want to respond to a couple of the comments that have been made, uh, both in Maureen's memo and, and uh, Steve Hiding's. Uh, the one comment uh, with regard to completeness uh, has to do with the solid waste. And um, the solid waste, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but um, I believe the solid waste will be handled internally. Um, there won't be an outside dumpster. Um, and is that correct? <coughs> what we're doing currently yeah. pretty low. Pretty low uh, volume. So uh, it's solid waste, essentially office papers. Yes. That sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's uh, how the solid waste will be addressed. And uh, just very briefly, going through some of Steve's comments. Uh, uh, number one, there's no response necessary. Uh, number two, we are asking for a waiver on the stormwater management uh, calculations, and I believe Steve has agreed with uh, that request. Number three, there's no, no response required. Number four um, has to do with the light fixture. Uh, I, I think Steve missed the note, uh, note number eight. Uh, which was on the plan regarding the spec for the light fixture, um, and we will add a light base detail. Uh, the walkway we have addressed, and I have uh, outlined uh, the revision on that one. Um, number six, uh, they have asked us to research an existing under drain along Ocean House Road, which we'll do and show on the next set of plans. And uh, number seven uh, has to do with the on-site septic system. And in your memo, uh, or in your packet, I believe you have a memo from Bruce Smith approving um, our, our system. So with that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, at this point, the first issue for the board to consider is completeness. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments on that topic? <coughs> Seeing some heads shaking, no. David? You want to make a motion? Sure. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for site plan review of the conversion of the building located at 330 Ocean House Road to an office be deemed complete. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. It's been seconded by Paul. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, my understanding is we are not having the public hearing tonight. We'll be scheduling that for the September, excuse me, we are in September, the October 17, 2006 meeting. Uh, so do we have a motion on that? Okay. Peter. Uh, I move. Of, uh, 2006 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Is there anything further that you were hoping to hear from us about, uh, John, before uh, you left tonight? Other than if you have any, any comments or questions. It sounds to me that you've already addressed one of the major comments from the staff, which was the placement of the sidewalk. So um, other than that, I, I didn't actually have any. Does anybody else? I think we're all set. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the high school turf field. 
the Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review of a proposed turf field to be constructed on the site of an existing athletic field located behind Cape Elizabeth High School. The site plan is proposed in two phases. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. At this point, I would ask the applicant to come forward and introduce the project. We have uh, had at least one workshop regarding this application, but it's maybe the first time we've actually had it at a, this project introduced at a public meeting. So welcome. Well, thank you. Um, Graham Smith, part of Kids Turf, who's been, uh, we've been um, behind trying to uh, get the funds to put a athletic, uh, artificial turf athletic field, the existing site of the new athletic field behind the school. Um, which will be turned over to the uh, town of Cape Elizabeth. I guess we're working in unison with them right now to get that done. Um, the uh, plan includes replacing the existing natural grass field with an artificial turf field uh, for phase one. Phase two is a uh, bleacher system uh, on the west side east side of the field and a uh, snack shack um, storage facility on the south end of the property which would be phase two at this point in time okay thank you uh, you've brought somebody else here Did, oh are you uh, going to yeah you well, I, the site plan completeness, if you want us to go through that, we have a uh, comments from the town engineer we'd like to go through. Um, and the, uh, um, the site plan completeness uh, 12D, uh, which is the same issue the land trust had with the removal of solid waste from the turf area, which I ex expect, I assume is from the snack shack area there. Uh, what we will do at that point is all the uh, a solid waste will be retained inside the building and then uh, transported up to the school at that point in time. Did any board members have questions about the solid waste disposal issue? Uh, okay. Um, would, I mean, we're happy to, uh, I mean, it looks to me like there are no issues on completeness. Uh, would it be appropriate for us to determine that issue? And then we could uh, delve into a bit uh, the town engineer's letter. That's fine. Given that, is there a motion, David? Uh, oh, go ahead. Chairman, um, it, it, the school requested, and I understand because of the public hearing that we need to come back next month, the uh, maintenance director, I guess, at the school requested, and we don't have it in our drawings, which we will have for October, is there's a um, small, cabinet, if you want to say, right on this corner here, which houses all of the electrical equipment for the new light system, um, which is adequate for the light system. He requested last week that a four by eight, a four by six shed be put in that instead of that cabinet to house all of the electrical equipment for the new light system and whatever else he wanted to put in there. Future consideration. Future consideration. He, he just did a request that that panel wasn't a large enough <coughs> adequate structure. He requested that we look at a larger structure to house the electrical system. So that's not on the plan. <coughs> yeah, our, submi be, our submission was made before that, but we will revise this plan to show this being a four by six shed where the existing light cabinet is. Okay. We need to do that. Uh, well, why don't we determine then the issue of completeness uh, and certainly making that change uh, would be acceptable. Uh, it won't, won't affect the issue of completeness. Paul. Mr. Chair, um, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of the construction of a turf field behind Cape Elizabeth High School be deemed complete. Motion has been made. Is it by Paul? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by David Griffin. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. So uh, uh, you mentioned that you were hoping to spend some time reviewing the comments from the town engineer's letter. So yeah. we're happy to spend some time doing that tonight. Certainly. Um, 
My name is Andrew Manning with Pinkerman Greer Consulting Engineers. Um, as you know, we were here before as a workshop. Uh, some of the items specifically mentioned can be broken down to basically um, three sections. And I'll say item one on his list, or on the list, um, pretty much is a summary. I don't think there's any comments in there that you'd like us to address at this time. I don't see anything that is a comment or a question. Um, the second item, um, again, is fairly just a concept that future review may occur, fairly typical. Item three deals with the drainage, um, and it's my understanding. I, I, what I'd like to do is call them, make sure that I have their intent the same, so I'm not um, going back and forth, but I believe their intent is right now all the surface water runs off the grass and it goes down the embankment that way, whereas the existing underdrain system does not see a significant amount of runoff through it because it's buried under the ground and it's more of a uh, keeping the field dry. In the future condition, when the turf field is there, that piping system is actually designed to carry more water. And while there's the pre and post development rates are um, addressed, there's still more water coming out of the pipes than there are today. And he would like us to look at um, some of the, the outlets to make sure that they're stable, which we can do, and I have no problem doing that. Um, so I believe we can adequately address number three. Um, item number four is some inconsistencies in the details that they'd like clarification on, which we can provide as we amend the plans to include the electrical shed. I will address all these comments. I have no problems getting to them. Um, and then the last ones, five, six, seven, and eight, all seem to deal, or five, six, seven, all deal with the uh, bleachers. How are they to be constructed? And I know in the workshop we discussed it, um, but again, it's phase two down the road to some degree. We do have something we can submit as a, as a concept or as a um, idea, but at this time, that's not the actual proposal. There's uh, another phase to this is getting um, appropriate bids. How it will be constructed, though, is fairly straightforward and it can address five, six, and seven. This area today just is graded from the parking lot down towards the field. The bleachers will physically be constructed by constru um, placing a foundation, concrete foundation post like a sauna tube into the ground deep enough to support the, the structure. And from that sauna tube, there'll be a frame constructed and the seating goes on that frame. So the, fit, the ground surface is still underneath, is still grass, and this is almost like an elevated um, bleacher system. It's not a foundation like a house where you're filling the whole middle of it. It's just posts in the ground in the bleacher system um, sitting on those posts. So when it gets down to item three, we recommend details be provided to show the proposed support system. Um, no problem. We can give you one concept or one idea that was proposed um, to the to kids term. Um, but again, that's not the actual proposal, but that's how it would be generally constructed. Um, number six uh, deals with the bleachers overlapping slightly on the um, Vortechnics unit. Obviously, the final, you know, the, exi the exact layout will be situated such that that isn't a maintenance problem. And in this area, it is elevated off the ground so that you can still, just like many bleacher systems, you can walk underneath there and, and as you need to get under there, you can um, access anything. And then this item number seven is uh, typical sections and elevations um, will be shown. Um, and I don't know if it helps, but I can just show you what we're talking about. This is a, a cross section. So the existing grade would be coming up on the hill and there would be posts that carry the structure above. Okay. So that's a typical section. So we can include this in our NAB submittal that the existing ground would remain and be constructed. Now they show spread footings. Uh, the guys have just said saw two straight down with no spread footings. So the footing would be placed along. But that's it. 
But I think that addresses a number of their questions if we include this, you know, in the resubmittal uh, for your reference. Um, and the last comment from the engineer was um, addressing another note to, to show a refueling area. No problem. We can address that. There'll be on our plans, we show this as a material staging area. We'll also show a fueling area in that location also. So I don't think there's anything on the list that is um, extraordinary that we can't cover by October 17th. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions from any of the planning board members at this point? <coughs> uh, David. I have just one question. So I understand you're here to get approval on both phases, one and two uh, now. Correct. At okay. the workshop, I went into the workshop asking for just the turf field, which I was okay. totally prepared for. Um, and then at that point in time, we, it was suggested that we try for phase two. Um, I've got two sets of plans for phase two. The building I don't, but for at least the bleacher system. Um, and they're both very consistent in the construction. And I think we, a little bit was, I think Andrew thought I put that in the package. And I think I thought Andrew put that in the package. So uh, we apologize for that. Well, I guess my further comment is that it, as long as you put the details on both the drawings, when we see it next time, I think we'll be able to handle it that way easy. Okay. Right. Paul, did you have a question? I did. I should question a few in if I can. Um, I didn't see on the plan, so I apologize if it's there, but I missed it. I'm trying to understand how uh, disabled person accesses towards the bleachers. Is the walkway? From the sidewalk, as I saw in your cross section, is, is that elevate? Does that ultimately become an, an elevated and, and, and integrated with the bleacher system? Yes. Do you know approximately where the disabled spaces are on the bleachers, or is that not really an issue? It'll be. Nope, there are. Uh, yeah. Again, we can address that. Sure. So in this concept, you can see the ramp coming across, okay. and they have two. Four, six, eight, ten spaces where in the middle there would be right a okay. compound for the handicap uh, wheelchair areas. Okay. And that's also the ideal viewing angle on the front so that they're not blocking people around. Okay, great. Thank you. So they're located in the middle, two, four, six, eight, ten. So each trip has one. So along the front, they would roll up to the front and they'd be located along the front there. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, I, and I, I do recall the planning board workshop. We did suggest that they come forward with plans for both phases with the full understanding that phase two won't be built uh, until later. But uh, anyway, with that, it, we do need to schedule this for a public hearing at the October meeting. So do we have a motion for the board to consider? David? Uh, motion for the board to consider be ordered that uh, the above application be tabled to the October 17, 2006 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Is there a second? It's been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The motion carries. We'll see you uh, at the October meeting. Um, Did you have any questions yeah, for us? I have a question. Sure. September 30th. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that actually does it for our agenda this evening. Motion to, adjourn. motion to adjourn has been made. Seconded. All those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>